The Academy Awards were just announced, and now it's time to watch Top Gun 367 more times. Who cares about the others? Run It Back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Good Tuesday morning and welcome to Run It Back. I almost forgot what day it was. Let's just introduce everyone right now. Very serious. Uh, we're talking hoops. I can see why we're very, being very serious. Sham Sharania, Stadium Insider, right there next to me. Of course, Chandler Parsons back in his hostage cage, whatever that is. And Eddie <laughs> on the end looking lovely as usual. Chandler, uh, the, the house decorating is coming along. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're doing the office last, Michelle. So we still got some time. <laughs> Okay. Priorities. Priorities. Yeah, we could, I get it. Can we pick colors? Let's vote on colors. That'd be fun. Um, guys, we had a lot of a lot of hoops. I say that every time, but I really mean it today. And the big news was, of course, Giannis and Middleton. Big returns. Bucks put up 150 points on the Pistons. Giannis had 20 on 100% shooting in the first quarter. All right, Chandler. How scared is the rest of the league after last night? I mean, this this is a great version of the Bucks, and and this is this game was over early. They scored 49 points in the first quarter. Giannis dominated and, and made his presence felt super early. Um, and this is a game where Middleton they're not putting him in the starting lineup. They're only keeping him at 15 minutes just till he gets his legs back. But this is a deep team with so much experience. Uh, they defend. They have multiple ways to hurt you. Uh, we all know how good they can be, and they're just going to get that much better when, when Middleton is back to who he was, you know, before this injury and a couple of years ago as kind of that go-to guy in the in the in the crunch time. But uh, this was good to see Giannis back. He's missed a few games, and just he looked like he's better than ever, and it didn't miss a beat. Yeah, shout out to the Pistons. Worst record in the East, second worst record in the league. They played like they had a bit of an inkling that the Rockets might still win last night. And uh, they wanted to get, catch up a game in the standings for, for, for Victor Wimbiama. But, yeah, this game was over in the first <laughs> quarter, over in the first six minutes, really. Uh, the, the Bucks look amazing, but they look exactly as you would expect them to look against inferior competition. It's a great game to bring all your guys back, getting a good rhythm. Uh, I, I don't know if the league is any more scared than they were two days ago because th you had to expect this was going to happen. It went exactly as planned for them. And uh, good to see Chris Middleton and Giannis back out there and seeing those guys uh, getting ready to hit their stride. Yeah, I bet it was a good yeah, day, that, that's the biggest thing. <laughs> that's the biggest thing, what Eddie just said, is having Chris Middleton back on the floor. 15 minutes, just eight points, but two three-pointers, and they just need to continue to have him build up these minutes and get game reps. Giannis, 29 point, uh, points in like 24 minutes. Brooke Lopez, I think, 24 points in 21 minutes. So it was light work for them against the Pistons. But I think the biggest thing is this is this is a great game for all these guys to be back on the floor, and they need Chris Middleton to stay on the floor. Like, they can't afford any more extended absences because then the league will be fine with the Milwaukee Bucks. But as long as these three guys stay on the floor together – Drew, Chris, and Giannis. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone is always going to be scared of the Bucks. Dun, dun, dun. It's crazy that Detroit still had 130 points, by the way. Brooke Lopez, he had 21 in the effort, said it was great to see everyone playing together with no real chemistry issues. I mean, were we ever worried about that, Chandler? So healthy Chris Middleton, Bucks title chances. I, again, this is a team I feel like we just don't respect or love or think is sexy enough a lot of the times. But if he's healthy and he stays healthy, what are their chances? I mean, they're very good, but on the flip side, if he's not and he's you know in and out of the lineup, he's not playing. I I don't think they're I don't think they're going to win a championship without him being who he was last year, the year before, as that All Star caliber player. Like I said in the fourth quarter, we all know how great Giannis is, but when defense is really key in on him and in the playoffs. When, when it shrinks the floor, you Giannis especially, he needs a guy like Chris Middleton that can go get a bucket, that can score in different ways, that can shoot the ball. And they've had great, great wins without him. They're going to stay afloat. And they're going to stay right there. I, I just think for them to kind of be in those – that championship contender team, they need Chris Middleton. They need all-star Chris Middleton, not minute restriction, 15 minutes, you know, inefficient. They need him to continue to build and no doubt he will. This takes time. He's missed a lot of time, but this is, this is their closer. This is their score. This guy, this guy does it all for them. And when they were winning at a high level, he was a huge, huge reason. And, and he is the perfect, you know, Robin to talk to Giannis is Batman. And I think in my eyes without him, they're not a contender with him. They're right there in the mix with anybody. 
So no pressure on Chris Middleton. Check. Make note. Okay. Uh, every season since the beginning of time, there's one team that seems inferior that has the number of the other. And Orlando Magic, come on down, snapping the Celtics nine game win streak. This is their third straight win against the Boston Celtics team. Uh, Eddie, why? Why are the Magic such a bad matchup for them? I don't know what's going on out there in Orlando. <laughs> I, look, when I see the Celtics play the Nets twice a year in Brooklyn, they look like the 96 Bulls. They go to Orlando. I don't know. They're going to Disneyland. They're staying at the Oof. Bubble Hotel. I don't know what's what. But they go out there, and they look like the old Bobcats. I, I have no clue. I don't have a real great reason. They didn't have Marcus Smart last night. Uh, you know, you can chalk up as much of that as you want. They started Blake Griffin, which was kind of odd to me. But, you know, with Grant Williams kind of <laughs> – <laughs> consistently nursing injuries. I guess you you make it work however you make it work. But, yeah, it was tricky. And then Jason Tatum leaves late with a, with a little bit of a tweak, a little injury. Uh, but, yeah, the, I bet the Magic, they would love to play these guys a few more times this season if they could because they looked spectacular last night. Love it. Yeah, this is what I don't really understand. And I, the Magic are young. You know, they have energy. They have long, physical guys that can kind of speed the Celtics up and, and you know, they, they forced a lot of turnovers on the Boston Celtics last night, but this is really a head scratcher, you know, but holding them under a hundred points is, is super impressive. They defended, they locked in. And for whatever reason, this is one of those teams, like you said, they just, they have their number. They know how to play. They bring their a game against them. And yeah, I almost want to see a series <laughs> now at the Celtics versus the Magic just to see how it pans out. This is, uh, hate this, it. this is a confusing one. It's very confused. Look, it was also a very big night for the Orlando Magic with the return of Jonathan Isaac, who had missed 211 games. The Obviously, the whole team, they showed up in one jerseys and one T-shirts. His return, a lot to the fans, but what does it mean to the team, Shams? Well, it means everything. And Jonathan Isaac really encapsulates what this Magic team is about. When I talk to team executives and other players with, with, with other teams around the league, they look at the Magic as a tough opponent because, one, they're young. Two, they're really playing for nothing. They're playing with house money every night. They're, they're athletic. They're talented. They've got good depth around the entire court. You have Markel Fultz, Paolo Bancaro, Jonathan Isaac now, Wendell Carter Jr., Franz Wagner. They have a pretty good young nucleus uh, that they can build on. They're clearly going to get another high draft pick again this year. So this is, a, this is a tough team to play against. Jalen Brown said it last night. They're like the Cavs of last year where they're so long, they're hmm. so athletic. Uh, they, they can make it difficult for even the best of teams as long as they're having a good night. You know, the likelihood is that either it's through execution or not making shots. They're not going to have these nice often, but they can make it hard. I've seen them beat the Bulls a few times this season. Uh, so they play all the good teams very, very, very tough. Again, I say, maybe on, on this, yeah, go ahead. On this Jonathan Isaacs thing, like we talk about Chris Middleton missing this, these games and even Clay Thompson who missed a lot of time and how hard that is to come back from. This dude hasn't played in two and a half years, 211 games. And there's this misconception about guys that they're soft or they're injury prone. And like this kid was on the path to stardom and he was supposed to be so good. He's just been riddled with injuries. So it, I was just so happy to see him back out there doing what he does. And that's a long, exhausting grind that this dude just had to be on. And, uh, you know, as a guy that was injured a lot, especially with my knees, I know exactly what he's going through. And, and that was a real special moment, even for me on a pointless Tuesday game. Uh, that was awesome to see. Yeah, it was it was awesome to see the way that the rest of his team was super stoked for him to be back in the building as well. I think the young man is very much liked uh, Celtics, though, without Marcus Smart. We mentioned at the top of this thing, he did injure his leg on Saturday. Chandler, I, not sure yet for how long this is going to go on, but how big a loss for any period of time, really? I mean, it's a loss. It's, it's he's the glue. He's the toughness. He's the leader of this team. And, and you know, he kind of carries the defensive sets and the schemes and we all know his value there he's shooting the ball well he's he's, he's kind of a do-it-all player for them so as, as good as brown and, and tatum are and how brogdon's been for them uh yeah this is a different look without marcus smart he's kind of the heart to that team yeah the the, the celtics are treating it like a day-to-day -day injury but i wouldn't be surprised if marcus smart takes a little bit of time off because this is the same ankle that he hurt last year in the playoffs. This is something that, at this point in the season, they're the number one seed in the East. Uh, they've been the best team in the league all year. You want to make sure he's 100% for the second half of the year. So I think it, it wouldn't surprise me if whether it's a week or, or, or you know a couple weeks that he takes off to make sure he's 100% uh, with that right ankle sprain. Guys, America's team.
don't look now, but that beam, that beam's going to burn out. It's just lit up every single <laughs> night. Last night is no exception to the rule. Kings beat the Grizzlies. They've now won six of their last seven. They were 12 of 13 from the three in the first quarter. Uh, outscore Memphis 33-10 in the fourth quarter. Man, Eddie, I know this is your hometown team. How are you feeling about this team right now? They're legit. They have the second best offense in the league, and it's only by a point, 0.1 points in the net rating or offensive rating, whatever the fancy number is they use for that. Uh, they shoot the, I don't, it's a cuss word. They shoot the ball like nobody else. <laughs> Ten straight threes to start the game. Uh, tied the record for most threes in a quarter in the history of the league. It, like, they looked Ooh. insane. Now, I will say their defense has a ton of holes, and we know that the Grizzlies have been great the last two years, When even when they don't have John Morant. The Grizzlies actually came back. I think they tied. It might have even took a one-point lead. But that third, that fourth quarter, they blew they blew the doors off of the Grizzlies and got them out of there and handled business. This is a good team. They had Mike Bibby on their broadcast yesterday, and he said, this feels like us. This feels like our old oh. team, that old early 2000s team that was passing a ton from the elbows with the big fellas, bringing the ball up with Vladi, with Chris Webber, shooting a ton of threes for at the time. And he's got a good point. Uh, I think Sabonis is an all-star. I think De'Aaron Fox should be an all-star. They're legit. They're going to have to figure out a way to play some playoff defense. But they got a ton of shooters. They know what they're doing. They, they run that offense crisp out there. And, yeah, they, I'm not going to say they humbled the Grizzlies. I don't think anybody humbles the Grizzlies. But a 33-point win at home, you, you got to be excited about that. Humbling. <laughs> yeah, 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 this is an exciting team. And, and to 12 of 13 threes to start the game yeah. is insane. I, I don't know. That, that's a crazy way to come out of the gate swinging and to, in the fourth quarter run they went on that kind of just you know put a stamp on the game but this is a legit team this is a legit team with two stars and they have a bunch of guys that know their role and that can really really shoot the ball and Harrison Barnes has been unbelievable the last couple of weeks from the three Kevin Herter has been such a great addition for this team I love their their rookie and Murray um, and when you get guys like Trey Lyles having career nights this is tough and we know you know, the Grizzlies are a shell of a team of what they are without John Morant. But, uh, you know, anytime you can get a win like this at home, it, it feels good. And there's definitely some buzz in Sacramento. I mean, Trey Lyles, 24 points, six three-pointers. Uh, you know, throughout his NBA career, he's been bouncing around a lot of different places. He was supposed to be a really good player. Uh, it just has not worked for him in the NBA. And then this season, what he's been able to find, I have to give Mike Brown credit. Like, when stuff like that happens, when you have a rotation player that becomes solid out of nowhere, you have to give credit to Mike Brown. He's done a great job with him, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray. Uh, th this is a team that, that has gotten off to just a great start. And I have to give a lot of credit to Mike Brown establishing the culture there. I am very curious, who's going to be an all-star among De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis? Do they get two all-stars this year in Sacramento? They probably are deserving, but it's, it's, it's tough for me to see Sack getting two. Uh, but it, to, to me, it's, it's big time for Mike Brown, what he's done this year. Yeah, that's two tough. I don't, I don't know if they'll get two. I think De'Aaron Fox is a for sure lock. But listen, they're having a great year. They're right there in the thick of things. And, and usually the top two, top three teams – they deserve two all-stars. So it's going to be, they're going to have to take a hard look at that. And uh, I think, like I said, I think Fox is in and Sabonis, you know, looking at the bigs in the West, he's having just as good of a year as everyone else. And their team's having a lot of success. Yeah, I think they're both in. I think, you know, whether it's injury, whether it's whatever, Demonis has played more games than Anthony Davis. It's, it's, it's crowded as you think the forwards would be. I don't think Draymond Green's getting in. And then going to the guards, we're probably looking at De'Aaron Fox versus Damian Lillard. Fox has played more games. Fox is the leading clutch scorer in the league right now, and he's shooting like it's some astronomical like 80% from the field in the last five minutes of close games. I think they both deserve to be in. They're the three seed right now by a game and a half. They picked up a game on the two seed last night with that win. Uh, if, if they keep trending like this and they're still the three seed as we start picking teams here in the next, uh, what is it, they pick next week, I think yeah. they both are deserving. We'll see. I understand a future Hall of Famer like Dame getting that spot over De'Aaron, but – I would love to see some new fresh faces in there, and I think Sacramento deserves the nod. What a fun all-star this is turning out to be. So many unknowns that we don't normally talk about. I kind of love it. Uh, on the other side of things, we mentioned no jaw. There was no Steven Adams. Um, this is the third straight loss for Memphis. I mean, look, we're going to be asking this for the rest of the season, as long as they stay up at the top, Chandler. But are they ready to contend this season? 
I mean, yes, I, I think so. And and they are cocky and they are arrogant, but <laughs> that's that's kind of their lane. You know, they've, they've kind of established this culture and this arrogance and and they're running with it. And that's part of the appeal of the Memphis Grizzlies. They're young. They're exciting. They talk a lot of trash. Um, this is who they are and they are extremely talented and they have an absolute stud in John Morant and they built this team with the bright pieces around him. They're young, they can shoot the ball, they defend, they play hard. So yeah, I think when you look at the Western conference, uh, I don't think there's a head clear on favorite. I think I wouldn't be surprised if any of these top teams, I'd be surprised if Sacramento came out of the West, but if any of these other teams come out, uh, I think the Grizzlies are right there and, and, and they've had a great year and I don't think they should change. I think this is who they are and this they've created this whole villain, bad guy, dancey, trash talking uh, situation. And, and, and yeah, like this, this, <laughs> this wouldn't happen to many other teams. I promise you that. Is Shannon Sharp the face of the Memphis Grizzlies? Go. <laughs> yeah, <he is>. <laughs> <laughs> I will say they, they that was were- a good... That was a good apology he had. I feel like that, that was, was very good. It's almost like his co host doesn't know what an apology is because he took four <laughs> minutes to apologize for this. Oh, sorry, Eddie, go on. Hey. No, and I believed his apology. He looked right in the camera yeah. and, and apologized to everybody, his grandson, <laughs> everybody. Uh, but, no, I mean, the Grizzlies are contenders. They, they contended last year. They were up in the conference finals. Uh, I think they had the best record in the league. They're, they're, the, they're two seed right now. They have the best defensive rating in the league. Uh, there's, there, there's getting up some chatter going for Jaron Jackson as the defensive player of the league th- this year. <laughs> Uh, they're contenders. This is what you look for in a team. We've seen them spread out, play a smaller t- play a smaller uh, lineup with Jaron at center and switch everything and be a great defensive team in the playoffs. So we've seen what they can do. Obviously, the Warriors got the better of them. I think that's still going to be their worst matchup if they still having to run in them. But the way mm. the Warriors look right now, we don't know if the Warriors are even going to be there as crazy as that sounds. So, yeah, this is absolutely contender. It's one of the best teams in the league. Just a tough loss out there in Sacramento against a hot team. And when you only score 10 points in the fourth quarter, you're probably going to lose that game. Man, who would have thought Sacramento-Memphis tickets in January would be like a hot, hot ticket? That's crazy. And I love it. By the way, Jaron Jackson is the odds-on favorite right now for Defensive Player of the Year. I don't know why this next topic's in here. I thought we were just going to go straight to break. But we can just hurry through this Portland Trailblazers-San Antonio Spurs game real quick if anybody wants to talk about it. Uh, Yeah, Damian Lillard with a very nice 37 points. It it ended up being a blowout win, but it was much closer for three quarters. Uh, Blazers are a game out of the play-in right now. Look, this is a team that kind of flip-flops. I'm never sure where to put them, but... Where are we on chances of them earning a play-in spot in the West, Chandler? I like I like their chances. I like what they're doing. I, I love Dame Lillard. And when you look at that kind of bundled-up group, there, I like them more than the Thunder. I like them more than the Lakers. I, you know, many and, and the Jazz are kind of right there in the bottom half. So I think it's it's right there for the you know for, for the Blazers to kind of make a run here and. They've, they've lost a few here in a row, so it's good to see them kind of stop that losing streak, and they can't afford many three, four, five game losing streaks if they do want to get a chance, but I like them. I like what they're doing. I love Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant. If you're having more games like Nurkic had last night, uh, they're going to win some games, and they're going to be right there with a chance, so uh, you know, games like this from Dame are going to only help them, and, and I, I, like I said, I think they are just as good as those other teams right there kind of at the bottom. Oh, those shots. Killing me. Eddie, you agree? Oh, God. Well, I mean, the sixth seed and the 13th seed are separated by two games. So it, yeah. it's going to be a tough out for all of them. And, and, you know, the Clippers are getting healthier, I, I guess. The Jazz <laughs> are kind of steady in the ship after, after a rough patch as well. Uh, you know, they're in the mix. I, I don't know if I'd favor them. The Warriors are right there. The Lakers are clearly motivated, and they're waiting on – their second best, maybe their best player to come back. They just made a move. Everybody's taking a shot there. It's exciting that everybody's giving it a go because in years past, we would see, you know, some of these teams would probably be bowing out by now. I think they may be the worst of the bunch besides maybe the Thunder, who I, I, are exciting to watch and having a good time out there. But only one game in the loss column back from the sixth seed. So, wow. yeah, I mean, they have a chance. That's crazy. Yeah. 
the Trailblazers better hope that they make the play-in or the playoffs. I mean, you, you give Damian Lillard a super max, you go out and trade for Jeremy Grant, give up a first-round pick, you give Yusuf Nurkic you know, some money this past offseason. They've invested a lot in this team. Anthony Simons got a bag as well. They put a lot into this team, and if this team does not make it to the play-in, I think you have to look at this organization and question where the future is, what moves they could make in the summertime. Jeremy Grant is eligible to sign a four-year, around $113 million extension. Right now, he has yet to sign it. So there's definitely questions about the Trailblazers' future. But currently, yeah, I mean, they better hope that they have a really good chance. They're going to be right there. This is going to go right down to the wire. Yay. Excited about that. Here's the thing, Chandler. The world loves what Damian Lillard has done. He's been so vocal about staying in Portland. That's really sort of part of his his brand at this point. But if they don't make it, and this is another quote-unquote wasted season, what does Damian Lillard do in the end? I mean, listen, I can't. It seems like he's staying there and he's there for the for the long haul here. But yeah, he's going to want to win. He's going to want to add more pieces. He's going to want to be able to contend and get a championship. And you don't just stay there to stay there because you like the city or you like the people. You like you like the organization. You <laughs> want to go to work. Yeah, yeah. Voodoo donuts are good, but I mean, <laughs> it, it's you want to contend, and it, there's going to be frustration here. And like Shams just touched on, it's this is. Most of these teams kind of in the situation we thought we're going to tank. And now it's kind of fun because everybody seems to be trying to win and except San Antonio. Whoa, everybody, whoa. Every, everybody <laughs> wants to, I feel like everyone wants to get in that play and, and thinks they have a chance, especially in the Western Conference. It truly is wide open. So I love Dame. I respect him for doing what he's doing and staying there. But yeah, at a certain point, enough's enough. And he's going to want help or he's going to want to get the hell out of there. There's a universe two summers ago where he leans into the chatter rather than stepping out and, and taking it all back. He, he actually asked for the trade, and maybe that meeting with him and LeBron and AD go a certain way, and he's a Laker instead of Russ. Uh, you know, look, I, I respect him staying there and, and trying to make something happen there, and, and, and it's all great. But he, he, he's, he's seen front offices has changed, coaches changed, he's lost his co-stars, he's got new co-stars. They're drafted his, you know, I guess pseudo-replacement Dame is a Laker, Dame is a Nick, Dame is a Maverick, Dame is whomever the teams that were interested at the time. It's enticing. I, I, I'm surprised that he stood on that. But, you know, the big three of Dame, AD, and LeBron would have been quite the, you know, contender right now. And they would have been a much better fit than Russell Westbrook. Um, but I'm with Shams. They're bought all the way in on this team, on this roster, on this current iteration of the, of the Blazers, and they need this to win. They paid a ton of money to Damon Lillard. They're looking like they're going to pay a ton of money to uh, Jeremy Grant. Uh, they paid Anthony Simons his, his check. They got Nurkic. They're going to figure out, like, they're locked in on this, and they're not a contender at all. So, like, yeah, they would want to make the playoffs and try to make some noise. Oh, I wish I could tell the future. I'd be so much richer, and also I'd know where Damian Lillard was going. Uh, up next, Shams gave us the scoop yesterday on Hachimura, and then he was traded to the Lakers. How much better are the Lakers now? That when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up. Well, there it is. Lakers finalizing a trade, sending guard Kendrick Nunn and three second-round picks to the Wizards for Rui Hachimura. And that was yesterday, right after the show. Young man, you asked to be traded, and you are now going to Los Angeles. All right. Okay. It happened, Shams. Everybody happy on both sides on this one? I, I mean, I think the Lakers for sure are. You give up <laughs> second-round picks for a guy in Rui Hachimura. Yes, he's going to be a restricted free agent. You know you're going to have to pay him in the summer. But this is a guy who's shown that he's an explosive scorer. And j just to get him for second-round picks is a pretty good haul. This is a guy that probably would go for a first-rounder under a, n a normal trade potentially. But, you know, if the Wizards had maybe waited. But I, I do think getting three first-round picks, it opens up the logjam for the Wizards. Now they can fully focus on just paying Kyle Kuzma in the offseason. They don't have to worry about Rui Hachimura. Uh, and for the Lakers, you have AD coming back, Austin Reeves, Lonnie Walker. Now you add a guy who just came off a game where he scored 30 points, a career-high tying performance. Um, I think the Lakers are going to be very pleased to get Rui Hachimura. Uh, yes, he's had things off the court, but now uh, I think this is a move to the Lakers that Rui Hachimura even himself wanted, and we'll see <laughs> how he takes advantage of it. Yeah, he was pretty uh, pretty vocal about it, Chandler. Look, we've seen the the listings, the the, the rankings of the Western Conference right now. What does the addition of Hachimura do to this team? Do they move up? Yeah, I love the trade for them. And first of all, Shams, there's nothing wrong either with second-round picks, okay? So this, <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> gym that can be drafted in the second round. But no, I love it. I love it. In a situation like the Lakers are in, you just you need a splash. And, and I don't is, is Hachimura a, a cannonball splash? I don't know about that, but I, I love him because he's young. He gives them youth. He gives them something different. He gives them this boost of energy of, of excitement coming to the team and he can score the ball and he's talented and he has a future now with the Lakers where if they end up paying him, which I think they should, this is a great move for them. This gives them talent. This gives them someone that can relieve pressure that can go score the ball. that can get a bucket has size. I love the trade for him. And honestly, they didn't really need a, they didn't have a need for Kendrick Nunn with Schroeder, with Reeves, with Russ. So they didn't give up much to get someone that can be there now for years to come. And, and so I love it. And I think the real winner of this trade is, is Kyle Kuzma. Cause that just basically solidified that he is going to get the bag this summer and he's going to be in DC for a long time. Oh, we got it. We got a magic tweet. God, I love magic tweets. Look at that. Just I, facts. Always facts. <laughs> I think Chandler I, <laughs> I think Chandler nailed it in that they traded somebody who they didn't need for somebody who could potentially fit a need. And so in that sense, it's a win. You know, you got to see what they end up paying him this summer. But I think he's the type of player that LeBron will help it make a lot better. He will find him easier buckets than he's had thus far in his career. He'll be able to create off the catch and slash uh, on the weak side with this roster and yeah, I mean, I, they're they're taking they're buying low on him. They they weren't doing much with Kendrick Nunn. That was a bad signing. They lost a whole year to him. Where, uh, you know, so they're looking back at that free agency and feeling like they failed a little bit. And they got something for him on the way out. So it's a fine deal. We'll see what Rui Rui can do over there. And you know, I mentioned him yesterday. I compared him to Laurie Marketing, and I think you know that's obviously the best case scenario that he turns into an All Star. But maybe he needed a change of scenery and just a better situation for himself. He's still young and you know whether we like to admit it or not not everybody's uh Luka Doncic some of these young guys they take five six years to turn into the player that they're going to be some of us are late bloomers I take everything Michelle I take everything I said back actually if the Wizards draft a player like Chandler Parsons they they win this trade so I take everything (laughs) I said back 2023 (laughs) Chicago first that's going to turn into Chandler Parsons Wizards win the trade Wizards are on to something I love you, but you are nowhere near the best second round pick in the history of the league. And I love you. Really? Uh, yeah. No. Are you insane? You got He's Manu. Be one you know of the best. Th- one of the best <laughs> earners. How about that? One Top of the best third. earners. Oh, now we're talking. Oh. <laughs> That's all that matters. That's all yeah. that matters. <laughs> Honestly. Money is the scoreboard of life. So, yeah, Chandler, you're back on top. My bad. I say corrected. <laughs> I <laughs> like that. It's a stat. I mean, it's got, I mean you, you have to factor that in. Hey, I mean, yeah. in the world, it's an important I, told, stat. I, I saw Kuzma's boy the other day, and he said he was he was pissed at me for something I said earlier in the show. How he's not a star. I said, "Listen, your kids' kids are going to go to private school off you getting the bag, not an all star <laughs> game, buddy. So don't worry about it." Chandler preaching truths. All right, talk to me. What else do you want to see the Lakers do before it's all said and done? Did you say me? Yeah, sure. I mean, I just I, I I like a trade like this. I like them kind of getting rid of people that they don't really need and bringing in talent, bringing in youth. And and like I said, it doesn't even really matter who. Obviously, that helps. But just to switch things up and to get a new face and to kind of this this I know the feeling when you trade for someone, especially someone like Rui. There's this new energy in the facility today. There's this new kind of sign of hope that this guy is really really going to help. Um, and I think if they could do a couple more like this, if they could maybe do a big one with, with, with you know, shipping out Russ, uh, anything, any way that they can add shooting, any way they could add talent, I'm all for it because the Lakers are right there. And LeBron is having an insane year and Anthony Davis is going to come back eventually. And they just need to get as much talented on this roster to start winning games and take advantage of this year because there's no reason to lose and there's no reason to tank. Hmm. Yeah, I'm with Chandler. If they can add some shooting, uh, I actually don't think they should trade Russ. He's been one of their best players. Right. He's kind of steadied their their second unit. He's his shot creation has helped them a ton without Anthony Davis. Now, when you get Anthony Davis, obviously the calculus changes a little bit. And Russ is probably your best trade chip, but maybe there's something they can do on the fringes and and maybe add another shooter. There's not too many athletic bodies like Rui out there. That's why it's a nice steal for them. Uh, You know, it it depends on who's available. But, yeah, they need a little bit more. And and they're a dangerous team. I mean, that that Grizzlies game showed that they're a dangerous team right now. And then they're missing their, I think, their best player. And and once they get him back, they're going to have a chance to make some noise. 
Yeah, I'm curious. They still have Patrick Beverly's contract that they can play with. He's at around $12 million, so you can use that and a couple other salaries. And I, I think that they're going to continue to be in it on Boyan Bogdanovich. That's a guy that does make some sense. Imagine a lineup of AD, Hachimura, Bogdanovich, LeBron, and then fill in the blank, Dennis Schroeder, Russell Westbrook, whoever. Like, that's a pretty solid lineup of shooting, scoring, some defense, playmaking. Um, so I, I would look at them to be active on that front. There's just not that star-level player right now available. Uh, you know, could they look into Pascal Siakam or Ojeana Nubi? That remains to be seen. Um, but right now, I think Boyan Bogdanovich is a guy that, you know, keep, keep monitoring if you're them. Yeah, Bogdanovich, is he going to move? That's the million-dollar question. Um, moving on to Serge Ibaka, it looks like Shams, he's getting his way, yeah? Yeah, the, the Bucks and Serge Ibaka are parting ways. This is a guy that's a 2019 NBA champion, three-time all-defensive team player. It just did not work out for him there. He's going to stay away from the team, I'm told, as they figure out exactly how his parting is going to happen, whether it's via trade before the February 9th trade deadline or is it a buyout afterward. He's on a $2.9 million minimum contract. So when you think about deals with Jay Crowder or any other player out there in the marketplace, Serge Ibaka is a guy you're probably going to put in that deal anyway. And now this disagreement between both sides essentially firms that up. But I'm curious if he does hit the open market, you know, who, who makes sense? I'm curious what Chandler and, and Eddie think as far as fit. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think there's still some value here, especially at the minimum. I don't like when, when, a, when a player ever steps away from a team, it, it's usually there's some – He's disgruntled. He's a distraction. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. But looking at the teams here, I like I like the Mavs. I like the Nets. I like the Cavs. I like the Grizzlies. Somewhere that's kind of teams that lack size, someone that need a little help depth, and, some, and a team that kind of thinks they are in that contending role to make a make noise this year. A guy like Serge Ibaka with his experience, with his you know locker room presence, and the way he can still play. I think you know you look for teams like that, and I, I could see that. I could see. You know, one of those four teams makes sense to me. Yeah, I think the teams he mentioned, I, I think the Suns could use him. You know, they <laughs> got a ton of minutes to Bismack Biombo. And he's not what he once was in his prime. I don't think he's a floor spacing big like people had hoped he would eventually turn into. Uh, but he, he obviously offers some shot blocking, some rebounding. He offers some size, which a lot of teams need right now at the moment. It'd be very interesting to see, you know, these are the kind of pickups where I, I said this a lot about the Nets. When you get a big that is a buyout and you're getting a buyout big you're getting a Dwight Howard level Sergi Baca level big he's not going to start for you he's not going to play a ton of minutes but if he can offer any value really he's worth it and and so I think there will be a ton of suitors for him much like there continues to be for Tristan Thompson for Dwight Howard for Andre Drummond for guys who could just go out there take up size and grab some rebounds Rebounds will always be valuable as long as there's basketball and missed shots so uh, it'll be interesting to see where he goes I love it. I, I hope he gets to go one of these contenders. We see a little bit more of him. Shams, as always, we appreciate you, and thank you so much. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow. We, however, are going to take a quick break. When we come back, the Academy Award nominations are out, and we have our own uh, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best Director. We've got them all, the NBA versions. Run it back. Returns. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it well, here's a fun little bet that's currently up on the FanDuel Sportsbook. You can bet on which of these games LeBron's going to break Kareem's scoring record. Right now, he's 223 points away. The Knicks is, I think, the fifth game from today, basically. Um, so that gives you sort of a little perspective on what we're talking about here. Chandler, you're so good at this. I, I'm going to do whatever you say. When will LeBron break the record? Dun, dun, dun. I, I like the Warriors game there. I like the... Plus 750 odds. I think that would be a really, really cool place to do it. It's going to be a national TV game, obviously, the closer we get. But I think that would be a really special place and, you know, special team to do it against. February 11th. Okay. All right. It's giving so it some time to breathe. What do you think, Eddie? Before yeah, that? Well after that? I know LeBron's pettiness has no bounds. And <laughs> it would be perfect to do it there in that arena i would love to see that crowd react and see what they do because uh, you know if warriors twitter is there they might boo them for three minutes if, if if regular normal people off twitter are there they might do the whole charade where they stop the game oh, and no. all of that like they did for step last year with the three-point thing uh i would love for him to do it if i was a betting man and i am shout out FanDuel, i would pick a home <laughs> game because i know that lebron's theatrics also know no bounds and oh. he's absolutely 
positively not going to pass the chance to do that at Staples in front of the home crowd and do right. whatever it is he's going to do. Uh, cry, uh, jump in the crowd, stop the whole game. I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm positive he has a plan. So bet on a home game. Can we add that? Can we add like home versus road? There, it looks I mean, like an equal amount. Right, and I would the hit the favorite right road. now. The favorite is in a, a home game against Oklahoma City on the seventh. That's the current favorite. Yeah, and that's the other thing. This is a big uh, speculation on the internet that he's been practicing that the sky hook is going to be the way he chooses to finally do it. Eddie, I, I mean, look, I'm with you. The man is very calculating. Do we think this is going to happen? This is actually going to happen. Yes, and I think Draymond's going to let him, like Brett Favre and Michael oh. Strahan. Like, I, I just hate everything about it. I'm so happy for LeBron's record. And just stop telling us you're not shoot first. You are. You've, like, you've shot more shots than some of the greatest shooters of all time. Like, it is what it is. But he, I absolutely believe he's going to try to do a hook shot. Is he going to make it? We'll see. I just hope it's not a free throw. Like, when Kobe hit 30,000, oh, it was a free throw. And it's like, right. boo. Yeah. So, yeah, do, do the Strahan, Brett Favre thing and just – it's fine. It'll live well, on by forever. the way, you can actually bet on how the point is scored or how the points are scored. Right now, the layup is the favorite. Just a good old-fashioned fundamental layup. But you're right. A free throw would be so anticlimactic. And for that, I'm rooting for a free throw. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Mo moving on. Um, Aaron Gordon had a brilliant moment last week on social media. This is this is negotiation 101, right? Said that he will do the dunk contest if he's also an all-star, okay? Adam Silver, I'm sure saw this, Chandler. If you're Adam Silver, are you making the deal? It, it's tough, because you, honestly, you look at it, they're the, number one, we're the number one seed in the West, and Memphis isn't getting to, New Orleans isn't getting to, Dallas isn't getting to. A lot of these teams, you know, kind of in that, upper echelon of the West aren't getting two all-stars. And if Denver continues to be the number one team, the second all-star with Jamal Murray's ups and downs is probably Aaron Gordon. And that was the sickest dunk contest I've ever seen. So this was brilliant. Uh -huh. This was absolutely brilliant that he said this because, I mean, he's <laughs> averaging 17 points, you know, six and three or something like that. He's not having that crazy of a year, but you know what? They're winning and he's a huge part of that. And he has been, he's had an unbelievable year. So yeah, you want to spruce up the dunk contest and you want to see things like this instead of these guys who we've never really heard of before, put them in the game. I love it. Seems easy, great, right, Eddie? Great bargaining chip. Great bargaining yeah. chip for this guy. His coach might be coaching the team as well. Uh, and I think if there's an injury replacement, him and the commissioner get to choose. Or I, I don't remember how it works anymore. It's it's all a mess. But uh, <laughs> he is a borderline all-star. And, yo, he's right to use his leverage because they need him on that all-star Saturday. We have Mac McClung. <laughs> Shout out Mac McClung. But we have AG no, Leaguer no. in the NBA no. dunk contest. Uh, let, let's just let him go out there and dunk. Let's just give him 20 minutes to show us his best stuff. Give him 50s and, and make sure Dwayne Wade is out there. But, yeah, great bargaining tip. <laughs> smart, smart of him to do. You can't crap on McClung and then say, shout out, McClung. Um, by the way, besides LeBron James, who else do you guys blame for the decline of the dunk contest, Chandler? I mean, it's tough because now with the contracts and with this all, I blame like the team doctors. I blame the team doctors. I, I, I blame like the load management. Most of these guys don't want to do it. They did. It's, 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 it's much more of an honor to, you know, be an all-star game or, and, and to play in that game than to be, it just some, somehow along, it just kind of lost its lust from these, you know, top tier guys. And yeah, like LeBron, I wish he would have done it. All these other great players that were great dunkers like him have done it. So I think it kind of starts with him, but it's just kind of – it needs more guys like Aaron Gordon. It needs more Zach Levine. It, means, it needs Shush. more good players to do it, not G-leaguers and guys that we've never heard of. Yeah, I, I do kind of blame LeBron for that year he put – LeBron there, he put himself in the, in the dunk contest. I don't remember the quote, but I actually blame Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine. They did some stuff what? we are never going to see again and we've never seen before that. Zach Levine did an East Bay – from the free throw line, then did a 360 <laughs> from the free throw line. That was like make believe. Kobe did an Adidas commercial in like 02, and, and it was fake, and he did a free throw line 360. So I blame them because there's no topping that. But it's yes, it's tough, is. and I, I don't I don't know how 
they get past that dunk contest. It's probably the greatest dunk contest of all time. And the Stars just aren't incentivized to do it. If, if it was like it should be, we would have had Zion already do it. We'd have had Ja Morant already do it. We, we, we've yeah. seen all that already. And it's just not as big event for them. Maybe throw less parties on Saturday. These guys are trying to get their fits off and go kick it and whatever. And but they just don't want to get sweaty. I have no idea. But, yeah, I, but I, don't, so I don't know. It's going to be tough to fix that. Picture that this year if it was Ja, Zion, yeah. you know, Donovan Mitchell and LeBron. I would watch that and I wouldn't watch the game. So, like, it, it oh, is, sure. you know what I mean? That's way more exciting. That's way more fun. Like, so it is, there is something to say where if, you know, two or three or four of these guys kind of can agree and do it, it can bring it back just as quick as it left. Besides, Eddie, the counter to your argument about can't top it is, well, where's the competitive spirit? I feel like if I'm a professional athlete in the world, anything I see, I think to myself, I can do better and I'm going to do better. So where is that? It has to exist. Somebody, some star no. knows they can do better. You're right, and that's what made that year's dunk contest so great is they were both really into it and wanted to win. You mentioned it last week. Uh, Aaron Gordon has held that grudge for not getting a 50 <laughs> till now. Like, he's wears 50 <laughs> because of that. And I, I, I'm guessing Dwayne way better stay away from him in public. But, like, that's why it ended up hitting like it did. They cared that night, and it just hasn't been the same since. Man, I really – I'm just hoping for a surprise, but I, I'm not holding my breath. All right. Oscar nominations bright and early out in La La Land were announced today, which means ours were also announced today. Um, and it's all Chandler and all Eddie. And we are going to get things started with best actor, i.e. floppiest flop, Eddie. I got Trey Young, who has, like, made them change the rules with his flopping. And, like, there's <laughs> nights when I watch Trey Young, and he's not even, like, an NBA player. Like, I can't – I understand he's slight. I understand he's small. And I understand he's taking advantage of defenders. And that's great. This is not fun basketball. He is <laughs> absurd to watch. Honorable mention to Joel Embiid. I know that's not mm. Chandler's pick. But I want to make sure we know that Joel Embiid is quite the flopper as well. He's up and coming. He's up and coming for sure. Chandler. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, great nominees for this award. <laughs> um, they all they all do it. But I, I took Marcus. Oh. Moore. I mean, this guy has kind of mastered it. He's look at Jalen. Br he's so good. His teammates even flopping <laughs> with him. <laughs> look at, this. at least one of them. Did one of them get the call there? Probably not, because they flopped. <laughs> oh, they really did. Yeah, listen, that's what he does. He kind of he's, he's the ultimate kind of grab your face. He's the ultimate check that's... if you're bleeding when you got like hit in your chest. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 uh, he's mastered this. this. This is actually flopping has become a part of his defensive schemes. Yeah, he's the so, Daniel Day uh, Lewis defensive... of flopping. Like he's, yeah. he's in Defensive it every year. Defensive player of the year for that. He's <laughs> like that. Player of the year. He's, he's added that he's to his He's grabbed bag. the reins. He's grabbed <laughs> the reins from Kyle Lowry, and he is not letting him get that, that back. <laughs> it's yeah, his I brand. wanted to go with the old head guys. I wanted to go with LeBron or Chris Paul or these guys, but I feel like we got to go with more current. Whoa, whoa, whoa. LeBron said what? he has to learn how to flop, so I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, he hasn't learned that yet. <laughs> At him. Uh, best <laughs> supporting actor uh, maybe like your second your third option Chandler uh, I love Jalen Brown uh, not for his flopping on that first play but just the things he's <laughs> doing uh, it is yin and yang over there I think this is the best duo in the NBA they have carried this team to the most consistent best team in the NBA thus far and the year the growth he's had the way he scores the ball the way he gets to the rim his athleticism <laughs> Uh, I think he's the best supporting actor because I think he could be the best lead actor on a lot of other teams. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right, Eddie. Yeah, I have Aaron Gordon, and uh, I know we just talked about him and want to see him in the dunk contest, but they're, they're the best record in the Western Conference, and a, he's a large part of it. He's one of the biggest beneficiaries on offense from all of Nikola Jokic's magic, but he's also by far their best defender and has made them a league average defense, which doesn't sound like a lot, hmm. but is incredible for the personnel that they have over there. He guards one through five legitimately and patches so many of their holes on defense. Uh, you know, he's going to be unsung all year. He's not going to win defensive player of the year. He might not make it into this all-star game despite his leverage play. But he's been incredible for the Nuggets. He's been a great pickup for them. That's a good, that's a good award for him. Best director, very important. Uh, obviously, we're going coach here. Eddie, you first. So I'm going to butcher his name like I already said, but Mark 
Dagnold from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, you know, we talked about the Magic earlier and how great they look and how competitive they are. And, you know, they're probably right on schedule. The Thunder are somehow ahead of schedule. They're just at 500. And, and they've continued to develop those guys in the two years that Mark has been there. Shea has, has grown into a star. Josh Giddy has went from people wondering if they drafted him too high to understanding that he's a franchise corner piece. And they're doing all that without a top top draft pick talent in, in Chet Holmgren. They look great this year and they're ahead of schedule and next year there should be a surefire playoff team and what he's done with them and his development is a big part of that. Love it. Chandler? Yeah, he's been great. I went with J.B. Bickerstaff. Uh, personally, I just know how good of a coach he is. I think Mike Brown also should get some love here, but J.B., what he's doing with this young team, uh, he's keeping them just kind of right there in the mix of things. hes I know he's developing these young kids, and that's really what he does best. He's an X's and O's guy. He's great offensive mind, but he can really develop. He's in the gym with these guys. He's in the gym with Darius Garland, and he's got his player development guys, but JB is on the floor with these guys, getting them better every single day. He knows how to relate to players, and they're having fun, and you can tell they love playing for him and and they're winning and they're 10 games above 500 and, and they're a very dangerous team and i think a lot of that obviously is the talent and the roster they built but jb is a huge reason for that that's a loaded field the best director field all right best picture which is the best moment so far chandler yeah, I'm sticking with Cleveland. I think Donovan Mitchell's incredible wow. 71 point performance. Uh, you don't see that very often. I, it was an incredible game. Uh, I don't care about the the two minute report with the with the blown you know free throw call. This was so special. This was fun to watch, and this is, was a historic historic night uh, that he'll always have and I don't see many other people do it. even with the scoring now it's tough to get 71 points so th this was this was huge for me and this was fun to watch Eduardo all right I went biased but this is absolutely my favorite part of the season KD back home dropping Daniel Gafford in front of all his friends his family everybody who's there to see him it's just ridiculous without the push like I, look I, like I said I'm biased love to see my brother out there shining he'll be back <laughs> soon I think they're gonna announce it today how much longer he has or whatever but oh, that good. was great it was amazing you know what we'll give you that one that's fair best picture also a loaded field guys <laughs> it happened we hit our parlay oh my god so when we come back, not only are we going to brag about that, we're going to build on that. The empire begins again when Run It Back returns. You do not want to be on the sidelines during the NFL playoffs. So get in on the action with FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Right now, all customers can place the same game parlay or same game parlay plus of three legs or more on the NFL playoffs and get bonus bets back if you don't win. There are so many ways to bet on the NFL playoffs, including exclusive player props, live same game parlays, alternate spreads, and so much more. So download the app today to start betting the NFL playoffs. Well, Monday was a big win for the three of us and hopefully all of you because we hit our parlay boys and I feel pretty, pretty good about it. So there it is. Beautiful green W's that we are, we are going to grow accustomed to seeing again. If I do say so myself, um, that Giannis one by the skin of our teeth. And I love it. Okay. Tuesday, Eddie, go. I got the Knicks right. getting points at home against the Cavs. I just like the little bit of revenge against the guy that everybody wanted them to trade for. They beat him last time. I'm looking to him doing it again. Okay, okay. I like the reasoning. Chandler? Yeah, I went pretty simple here. I just took the better team against the worst team. I like Mavs, Moneyline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like this one's pretty pretty good. I just took Sound the logic. better team I like it. against the worst team. <laughs> you know what? Right I <laughs> That feels pretty good. All right. I took the uh, the Pelicans plus one against Denver. They're at home. I feel like, uh, you know what? Again, I don't have reasoning. I just feel, okay? Like witches do. <laughs> Bet 20 bucks. <laughs> win 80. <laughs> yeah. We lose, but we actually lose money if all three of these hit somehow. I know. It's so stupid. <laughs> we have no reasoning other than that. All right, guys. Watch. That What? Watch. Well, what? We we find out Jokic is coming back at about three o'clock. I'm gonna be like, all right, Beetle. <laughs> Guys, stick with us. Get rich. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a good one. <laughs>